Drinking from the spring of living water every Monday during the Bible study of the Deeper Christian Life Ministry is such an enriching experience that affords you an unforgettable encounter with God and His Word. The vibrant general superintendent of the ministry, Pastor W.F. Kumuyi, is a renowned minister and teacher of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, having traveled worldwide for the propagation of the gospel. Each contact with his ministration gives you the privilege of joining our thirsty and expectant congregation to receive the bread of life, which satisfies the body, soul, and spirit through anointed messages filled with unction of the Holy Ghost. This message will transform you and help to deepen your walk with God and your service to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Sit back as we present to you the unchanging Word of God through His minister, whose entire life revolves around the preaching of the gospel of salvation and purity of life in preparation for life here and hereafter. Let's welcome Pastor W.F. Kumui. Heavenly Father, we bless your name for bringing us together tonight for this wonderful study of your word. Thank you, Lord, for what you have said for us. And thank you for what we are learning so simply like this when it took all the people deep and great experiences to learn. And yet we preserve this for us. We pray, Lord, we'll show gratitude unto you for what you've given to us in Jesus' name. And we pray that this word that will preserve for us through the ages, many people have suffered and lost their lives because of the preservation of the word. And now it's been given to us. We pray, Lord, we'll ever be grateful unto you in Jesus' name. Now, as we come to study, we pray, Lord, Lord, that's the benefit of the study. You grant to every one of us in Jesus' name. All our brothers and sisters, all our children, boys and girls who are studying with us in all the other locations all over this country, all over the continent of Africa and beyond, oh Lord, we pray as you are blessing us here, you bless them as well in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Thank you very much. You are sitting down now to study the word of God. We're in Daniel chapter 4. And we're looking at verses 34 and 35. Daniel chapter 4. We're looking at verse 34 and 35. What we're looking at today, one, is a testimony. A personal testimony of Nebuchadnezzar. What we're looking at today is a great revelation. A revelation that it took seven years for Nebuchadnezzar to be able to discover that revelation. What we're looking at today is an instruction as well. What Nebuchadnezzar learned in the seven years of experience in his humiliation. The Lord is presenting everything to us tonight and he's saying here, see what this man has learned. See what he went through before he learned this. And now you don't have to go through all that. If you are wise, you can just learn what others have learned. It makes us to see beyond what we would have known. We say it like this. We say, you stand or you sit on the shoulders of those who have gone before you. And then you are able to see far than they could see. You see, Nebuchadnezzar, he didn't know God, the true God, the living God, the everlasting God, the eternal God. But he went through a harrowing experience, a, a kind of terrible experience. You know the story already, what you have studied. And out of that terrible experience, then he learned so much about God, a revelation, an instruction. Let's look at it now. We're looking at Daniel chapter 4, verse 34. And at the end of the days, that is, at the end of that period, at the end of the seven years, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes unto heaven, and mine understanding returned unto me. And I blessed the Most High, and I praised and honored him that liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. Verse 35, and all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing, 
and he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth and none can stay his hand or say unto him what doest thou those are the verses of scripture that we're looking at but you'll see this is a testimony it says i nebuchadnezzar i lifted up my eyes i lifted up my eyes unto heaven he was looking at babylon before this experience when the experience came and then god humiliated him and god chastised him and great punishment came upon him at the end of the days he said i wasn't look at Babylon anymore because that is nothing now. All the builders of Babylon, even including myself, all of us, all the inhabitants of the earth, they are reputed as nothing in the sight of the Lord. And now I praise the Most High. He's the God of heaven. I'm not looking at my kingdom anymore. I'm looking at his kingdom. And his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. I'm not looking at my dominion, all the people I reign over. I'm looking at his dominion. And it is from generation to generation. We're looking at Daniel chapter 4 verse 1. Nebuchadnezzar, the king, unto all people, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth. Peace be multiplied unto you. He wasn't just going to tell the testimony to the people around him. He wasn't going to just share the testimony in his local community. He wasn't going to share the testimony only to the people around in Babylon. He was going to tell all people, all nations, all languages that dwell in all the earth. Can we stop for a moment and think about the thousands of testimonies we have? The change that God has made in your own life, in the life of your family, in your business, and the change the Lord has made in our church altogether. If we would add all the testimonies together, we can almost say that we'll not be able to finish reading everything in one year. And yet, how, what have we done with those testimonies? You see, in the case of Nebuchadnezzar, if Nebuchadnezzar had the privilege of an internet, think about that. If Nebuchadnezzar had the privilege of radio, the, the waves that will take all that he wanted to say to everybody in the world. If Nebuchadnezzar had the privilege of having television that will just beam everything and then they capture the, they capture the picture of Nebuchadnezzar when he was in his insane insanity and then when he came out of that insanity and he looked up to heaven and he said i praise the name of the almighty god and he called him the most high god if nebuchadnezzar had all the things we have today think about what you will do what a challenge to us i believe that when we eventually get to heaven if we fail to get this word out unto all people Unto all nations and unto all languages. Think about that. And Nebuchadnezzar was not just uh, happy with the Chaldean language. You know, before his experience, he was so proud of the Chaldean language. And all those Jews that were captured and he came to Babylon, he said, You must teach them the language of the Chaldeans, the language of Babylon. But now he said, I'm not even interested in changing the languages of people. All I want to do now is translate this testimony, translate this experience of God, and then send it to all the people in all the communities, in all the cultures, and in all the languages of the people. Think about if Nebuchadnezzar were alive today. With all the electronic kind of translation he could have. And with all the possibilities of just taking one single message. Think about this. This is just a single experience. And it's just a single dream. And it's just a single fulfillment. And it's just a single event. And then he put everything down. And he multiplied that in all languages. And saying to people... 
It's a challenge for you and a challenge for me. We have more than one message recorded down. We have more than one event we have done. We have more than one experience we have captured. And now we take that and we beam that out and it says, and we're not limiting that to our country here. We're not limiting that to just Africa. And we're not limiting that to where we have only churches and where we have a kind of a group. We're, we're putting that all over. If we're going to do what Nebuchadnezzar did, what will it have taken him? Think about that. You know, something when you read the word of God, and it says unto all people and nations and uh, languages. He had to send people, pick up people, interview people, select those people to travel around. How could they get to those languages? There was no radio. How could they get to those uh, nations? Uh, there was no television. How could they get to all those places? There was no internet. He had to pick up people. And he went, when he picked up the people, then he said, you'll travel here, travel here, travel there. You wouldn't know. As you just read verse 1, when he says, Nebuchadnezzar, the king, unto all people, nations, languages. You don't know the administration that goes into that. It's a challenge for you and for me that as we hear the word of God and as we learn the word of God and the word of God is available, then we make it available to everybody. Then he said in verse 2, I thought it good to show the signs and the wonders. Nebuchadnezzar, what kind of sign? The sign that turned me insane. And the sign that made the seven years of calamity and sorrow and suffering to pass over me. Are you happy that you went through such a terrible situation? Well, I'm happy because if that affliction had not come upon me, if that humiliation had not come upon me, I would never know the God of heaven. That experience is a good experience that turned my eyes away from the darkness of idolatry and turned my eyes to the light of the glory of God in heaven. Don't tell me that that insanity was bad. Don't tell me that that chastisement was bad. Don't tell me that the suffering and the humiliation was a bad thing. Anything that God uses to turn the heart of a man and turn that heart to the Almighty God is a good thing. You might weep tears, those tears are good. You might have sorrow, that sorrow is good. You might have pain, that pain is good. If that pain, if those tears, if that suffering, if that challenge, if that difficulty turns your eyes away and turns you away from idolatry and turns you away from perdition and turns you to paradise and now you can say there is a God in heaven. He is my God. That's a good, good experience. That's why Nebuchadnezzar said no, I'm not unhappy. Yes, I know what I went through and I'm going to tell everybody the change that has now come upon my life. I thought it good. That's to show the signs and the wonders that the high God has wrought toward me. How great are his signs and how mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and his dominion. Tell me the rest from generation to generation. Nebuchadnezzar's chastisement and humiliation brought a great revelation. Before the stroke of divine punishment came upon him, he had looked with an heart of pride and self-exaltation on the words of his hand. He looked at this great Babylon. Look at verse 29. It says in verse, in verse 29, at the end of 12 months, he walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. And the king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty? That was his attitude. He was proud. He exalted himself. He was haughty. But then, after that experience, after he suffered the wrath of God for seven years, he looked up to heaven and he blessed the most high. In the past, his flatterers had often complimented and praised him, O king, live forever. But now he became convinced that no king lives here on earth forever except the true and the living God. He declared, The Most High is he that liveth forever. 
he also received the revelation of God's kingdom and dominion, which is everlasting and from generation to generation. He realized to recognize the immeasurable greatness of God and the infinitesimal littleness of man. God is almighty and he is the most high while man is nothing. Look at that verse 35 again. And all the inhabitants of the earth, the king and the princes and the captains and the counselors and the cherries and the men and the women and the educated and the scientists and the philosophers and the psychologists, all of them together, all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. And he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth, none, none, none can stay his hand or say unto him, What doest thou? Now he realized that the greatest of men in comparison with the most high are less than nothing. God is infinitely great and man is infinitesimally small so small like an atom so small like a molecule so small like a grain of sand and and indeed he is nothing before god as his understanding returned unto him he referred to god as he that liveth forever god is the living god in contradistinction to all the false gods who have no life he lives forever in contradistinction to all his creatures on earth all of whom are destined to die he will still be living when all on earth shall have died he will live forever in the future as he has lived forever in the past that is our god that's what we're looking at today. But we're dividing the study tonight to three parts. Number one, the immensity of God. That means the greatness of God. That means it's so large and it's so big, so immense. You cannot really uh, see him through. And then number two, the insignificance of man. So small, so small. Insignificance of man. And then number three, the invisibility of God. You cannot conquer him. You cannot restrain him. You cannot limit him. And you cannot stop him. There is nothing he wants to do that he cannot do. He will do everything he wants to do. The invincibility of God. I come to number one. What's number one? The immensity of God. Let's look at, um, at Daniel chapter 4. We're looking at verse 34. And at the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes unto heaven, and mine understanding returned unto me, and I blessed the Most High. See what he called God now? He called him the Most High. And I praised and honored him that liveth forever. He says, this is a God, not like the idols of the land. This is a God that will never die. This is a God that lives forever. This is a God who has been alive from the past. He, he doesn't have any beginning, the first and the last, the Alpha and the Omega, the one who had been eternally self-existent from all eternity and he will continue to live until all eternity. So Nebuchadnezzar said, I praise him and I honor him because he lives forever. Whose dominion is an everlasting dominion? Yeah, you understand that the dominions of the kings of this world, they are changed, they are destroyed and displaced and those kings are deposed. But it says that this God, nobody replaces him. He does not have successor. He does not have predecessor. God does not have anybody coming before him. He has all been there for more eternity. No predecessor to the Almighty God and no successor. Somebody that will take over from the Almighty God and say, Okay, God, you've served your term and now you've served your time and that's okay for you. Now get out of the place so that we can succeed you. The successor, no, no predecessor and no successor because the Almighty God, He is always there and will always be there. And then here we are told that His kingdom is from generation to generation one generation will come another generation will go and the almighty god still continues is ever there the immensity of god as you look at jeremiah chapter 23 we're looking at verses 23 and 24 jeremiah chapter 23 
And we're looking at verses 23 and 24. Here we're told about God. And this shows us where, how to, how to really understand how great God is, how mighty God is, how infinite God is. He tells us in Jeremiah chapter 23, I'm reading from verse 23 and verse 24. I am I a God at hand, says the Lord, and not a God afar off. He says, what do you think I'm located? Am I a God, only a community God, a local God, a country God, a continental God, a God at hand, only a God here, and not a God also in verse 23, afar off? Am I not in, the, in all the places at the same time? No man can talk it like that. And no man can say anything like that. It's only God that can talk like that. And he said, Jeremiah, I'm asking you. And you go ask the people, am I a God at hand and not a God afar off? Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him? Who can hide himself any place and say, this is a part of the earth where God is, where his eyes do not see things, and where his hand cannot catch, and where his hands cannot touch, and where his influence cannot reach. He's telling us that his influence is everywhere. His power is known everywhere, and his understanding reaches every, every nation, every place. And he says in verse 24, can any hide himself in secret places that I, I shall not see him? says the Lord, do not I feel heaven and earth, says the Lord, my influence feels everywhere, my presence feels everywhere, my power feels everywhere, and my knowledge revelation feels everywhere, that's the immensity of God, the greatness of God, the power of God, even the heaven of heavens cannot contain him, he's so great, he's so big that the heavens of heaven cannot contain him. Think about that. And when you have a big house, and somebody comes in, he only sees maybe in a place at a time. He cannot feel the whole place. When you think of this earth, all the earth, the earth is nothing in size compared to heaven. And in the heaven of heaven, so big and so large, and then the Bible says, even the heaven of heaven, so big and so large, cannot contain God. We're looking at Second Chronicles chapter six, chapter six, verse eighteen. Second Chronicles chapter six, and we're looking at verse eighteen. But will God in very deed dwell with men on the earth? Will God? Well, can you limit God, restrict God, moderate God, contain God here on the earth? Will God in the very deed dwell with men on the earth? Behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain thee. The heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain thee. How much less?